Hey guys, how's it going? Matt here, and today we're going to be asking the question, is Designated Survivor any good? Well, this was actually one of the shows I was looking forward to most in this new TV season, because number one, I'm a huge Kiefer Sutherland fan. Uh, the guy is just a complete badass in everything he does, and I'm, I was really looking forward to this because it also seemed like an interesting premise. Um, so for those of you who are well, unclear about what the show is about, um, Basically, it comes down to, uh, during the State of the Union, someone from the cabinet is always kind of withheld uh, from going to the address uh, just in case there's an, ever an attack. So if everyone in the government should die, uh, this person is still around to preserve the continuity of the government. And uh, they're known as a designated survivor. And this is kind of common knowledge, so every time you see the um, the State of the Union address, there's always some guy who's held back and, you know, protected in case uh, something bad should happen. And the whole premise of this is that this happens and something bad does indeed happen where everyone is killed, the President, the Vice President, all members of Congress and the Senate, the Supreme Court, everyone, uh, during the State of the Union address. And so this normal kind of guy who had no political ambitions to become president is suddenly thrust into the seat of the most powerful person in the world during one of the greatest crises that the nation has ever faced. And we kind of follow his journey as, as he not only deals with the transition to becoming the leader of the free world, but also dealing with this kind of mysterious terrorist threat. And the, the promos for this show were really, really good. Um, but, uh, like it or not, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland's last couple of forays into television haven't been, uh, very good. Um, let's just be honest here. After 24 ended, and 24 was very uneven, like, it, it could be, like, some seasons were amazing, other seasons were just god-awful. Um, and some of his other stuff, like, uh, Touch and things along those, na um, those lines, uh, didn't turn out to be very good. So... I was kind of intrigued by Designated Survivor, but I was also extremely cautious going into this. And I found that it's very much in the vein of 24. There's a lot of good, exciting stuff in this show, but there's also a lot of really stupid stuff in this show. But this, the, the good kind of balances out the stupid. Um, and I'm able to look past a lot of the dumber stuff that I've seen and sit back and enjoy the show for what it is, which is basically what happens if Jack Bauer becomes president. And I think we've all wanted to see that at some point. Uh, now, uh, the character Kiefer Sutherland plays, President Kirkman, isn't quite Jack Bauer. He's, he's not like that special forces, hard-nosed, like, I'm going to torture this guy type thing. Um, he's actually very soft-spoken. He's more of an academic. Um, and he has to become kind of tough and hard in order to do the job of the president. And you see, like, each episode so far has had these moments where he's fighting with his kind of kind and inclusive nature and, um, you know, eventually coming to terms with the fact that he has to be a very, like, hard and cold political animal to get the stuff done that he knows is right. Um, so there's that aspect of it where he has his family and he's kind of struggling with this new role that he's been thrust into. And then you have the conspiracy aspect where, you know, you have an FBI agent played by Maggie Q of, Le of Nikita fame, and she's in investigating the bombing of the Capitol building and the deaths of, you know, the entire government. And it's very interesting to, um, to see her kind of uncover clues about who's responsible for this and things of that nature. So those are the two big stories where you have the, the conspiracy over the, um, the terrorist attack and then you have, you know, this guy trying to keep the country together and fill the ro fulfill the role and duties of the president and things along those lines. Now interspersed in this are some family drama side stories which are just terrible. There's a stuff with Kiefer Sutherland's son, who's been dealing drugs on the side, and it's painful to watch. <laughs> uh, 
And there's also stuff with uh, Kiefer Sutherland's um, minions where you got his chief of staff and his special advisor and they're kind of butting heads, but it's kind of almost like a moonlighting type relationship where you can tell there's some sexual tension there, but uh, at the same time, um, they don't really like each other. So, you know, like you have these little side stories going on that really detract from the really interesting stuff, which is basically everything that Kiefer Sutherland is involved in and everything that Maggie Q is involved in. Whenever these things come up, I'm just like, oh, please, God, just get back to the main storyline. And uh, the main storyline isn't immune to bad stuff either. Uh, there's more than one instance where, you know, you're sitting there watching it and you're like, this, this just wouldn't happen. Uh, it wouldn't play out like that. For instance, in episode two, there's a part where Kiefer Sutherland, at, at, in one of his first acts as president, goes to the bombing site of, of the Capitol building and he gives like this this very heartfelt speech to the crowd there and it just so happens that the exact same time he's giving the speech some police officer in Michigan is beating a Muslim kid um, because uh, of all the suspicion surrounding who was responsible for this stuff so Muslims have been kind of like you know, like targeted and everyone who's watching the speech suddenly pulls out their cell phones and they're like like oh my god there's a Muslim kid being beaten Mr. President what do you have to say about this and then a riot almost breaks out. And you're, you're just kind of like, no, no, that would, that would not happen like that. Nobody would be on their phones being shocked and outraged while you're at the site of the greatest, you know, uh, terrorist attack in U.S. history, listening to the president give an impassioned speech. That just, you know, that's not something that would realistically happen. And there are a lot of issues like that in this show where you're just like, that would not realistically happen. For instance, in the premiere episode, when they swear in Kiefer Sutherland's character, they take him to the White House. And I believe the proper procedure for that would be, you know, if the Capitol building's hit, the White House should assume to be compromised, so they would take him to NORAD. They'd get him right on Air Force One and fly him off to the bunker in Colorado where they know he's going to be safe because he's the only surviving member of the government at this point. So you wouldn't take him back to the White House. You wouldn't even stay in D.C. So there's a lot of stuff like that in here, but it's forgivable. It's stuff that you can su suspend your disbelief over. Um, but I will say this, like if you're, a, uh, if you're a Republican or if you're a conservative or something like that, uh, this can be a frustrating show to watch because it's very much on the side of like, you know, uh, of, of the Democrats, of the liberals, and things of that nature. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, it's just this show has decided that this character is a, a diehard Democrat, he's very anti-war, he's very, you know, um, about low-income um, housing and stuff like, and stuff along those lines, and a lot of the politics in this show reflect that. So, for instance, one of his main antagonists is played by Virginia Madsen, who is the other designated survivor, and she's a Republican congresswoman, and she kind of comes off as a little bit duplicitous and things of that nature. The military comes off as a bunch of warmongering jerks. Uh, they just want to attack whoever or whatever without thinking it through, without, you know, looking at the consequences and um, the police and racial profiling are really looked down upon and in fact there's this one moment i believe it's in the second episode where his advisor this girl that he's worked with who's been like his aide for you know since he began his career in politics they're in this room where they're talking about you know trying to find out who's responsible for these attacks and i think one of the FBI or NSA guys or something like that says like we have to do whatever it takes to find out who did this and she's like oh, you can't be suggesting we torture people and <laughs> and, and you're just kind of like like you know everyone can agree torture is not a good thing but sometimes you have to do what it takes to get the information you need to prevent more loss of life and at this point, like the the bombing of the white of the Capitol building was very fresh, so you didn't know if there was another attack plan. In fact, Maggie Q's storyline implies that there are more attacks in the pipeline. So the, this idea that 
oh, I'm offended that you would suggest that we torture someone to get information to stop another terrorist attack. It's, it's a very kind of like liberal way of thinking. That's not right or wrong or whatever. It's just, you know, it, it's the, the show's making a conscious effort to show that that's never okay, even though that's a very gray area. You know, in Kiefer Sutherland's uh, previous show, 24, there were lots of times where that, you know, tortured or not torture kind of dilemma came up. And the thing I loved about that show is they were like, you know, sometimes you got to torture people to get what you need. And it, it, it never passed like a moral judgment on the thing. Like you, you could see the human toll that the torture would take, but at the same time, it was in service of like a greater good. And there was often a ticking clock involved where, you know, you had to get this information by a certain point in time or more people were going to die. But this whole show has that kind of like left-leaning slant to it. And, you know, if you believe in that stuff, that's great. If you don't believe in that stuff, um, it can be a little frustrating. But that doesn't, you know, um, diminish the enjoyable aspects of this show, which is seeing Kiefer Sutherland kind of like come into his own as the president and kind of uncover this conspiracy. I don't know how long they can go with this concept. Um, this seems like the type of thing that would peter out after maybe like a season or two. But as of right now, I'm three episodes in, and I'm enjoying it. I think it's, it's worth checking out. I, I think it's a decent enough show, and I'm hoping that it'll get better as time goes on. So, is Designated Survivor a good show? I'm going to say yeah. And uh, if you're looking for kind of like a fun political thriller to watch, um, this is definitely one worth checking out. All right, guys, let me know what you think of Designated Survivor. Do you think it's any good? Do you think it's worth watching? What do you think of uh, what they're doing, where they're going? And let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, until next time, I will catch you guys later.